A neural has a dynamic resizing array called T-Array. It's a template type. Let's set it to use names for debugging. We can edit it in the editor or in Blueprint Script if it's a U property. We'll do Edit Anywhere to edit in the Details panel or in all instances. And we'll do Blueprint Read Write to edit in the script. Arrays support adding to the end. We can add multiple. We can get the length of the array using the num function. We can get the last index by removing one. We can remove at a specified index with remove at. Note that remove at will shift the later indices down. So if you have an array of five elements and you remove element 4, then the fifth element will shift into indice 4. We can write a for each loop. We can test if an index is valid with the isValidIndex function. And if the index is valid, we can operate on that index. Let's take a look at the different ways to remove from an array. So if I add some more values, I can remove by a value. I can remove by a predicate, which tests the values to determine whether it should remove. I can remove all of those that pass the predicates test. So the predicate just takes the entry to test. And if it returns true, it removes that value. The problem with these removes is that they shift the end of the array's contents into place. But there's a faster alternative called remove swap which, when it removes something, will swap in stuff from the end of the array to the position that was removed. That way, there's no memory shifting needed. The only problem with it is that it reorders the array. So the function is remove all swap, and you can pass a predicate into it also. We'll change the value to 3, and test the size again. Note that the array container is in the header containers slash array. If you auto include and get the chaos version, that is a physics version of the array, you shouldn't be using that for most general gameplay. You should instead be using the container slash array. Let's test that out. So we're going to add a bunch of names to our array. Let's go ahead and go with the debugger. We can see that we have all our contents. And we're going to remove the simple remove one, which should preserve the order of the array. So before remove should be before that, and two is after that. So it should go before remove, and then simple remove two. And we can see that is the case. Now we're going to use the predicate to remove all that match the simple remove two. So the order again should not change. So two is between before remove and three, so it should go before remove and then three. And then that's the case, before remove and then three. And so remove all swap is the optimized remove, so this should not preserve order. So here's the order before. We should see after remove potentially take the position of three. And now we can see before remove, after remove, and four is now after the after remove. So it swapped out the last element of the array into the three position. If we open up the actor, we can find the array in the class defaults. Codename array. And if we stop pi, we can actually add to the array. This is because we have the edit anywhere keyword in the U properties. Blueprint can also create arrays by just selecting a type. 
and then changing the variable type. So if we compile, you can then go in and click this little icon and set it to array. Because we have blueprint read write, we can actually access our codename array in the blueprint graph. So in begin play, I will modify it. So I type git codename array, we can access our array. We can add to the array. I'll promote that to a variable so we can add and remove it. We can do a contains check. Since we just added it, it should contain that value. We can remove values from an array. We can get the length of an array. In Blueprint, it is called length rather than num. We can do a for loop over the array. We can drop a blueprint breakpoint to test that out. Notice that the values we set in the editor are in the array. So editor one, two, three. Note that if we want to actually have the blueprint begin play execute, we need to call the super begin play encode. So we can see the values of our array when the blueprint begin plays. We only have the editor values in it. So this is executing before the code begin play. And so we can add the blueprint name so if we look at the contents of our array, we now have a BP added name at the end of the array. Our contains check should return true, and it did. So now we can remove from the array. So we have four elements. After the remove, we have three elements. And we can test the length of the array. So is it greater than zero? It should be, because we have three. And then we can for each loop over the array. So that has printed the values to one, zero. And note that at the bottom of the for each loop is a completed pin, so you can drag off of this when you need to execute after the for each loop. We'll continue exploring containers in further detail in further videos.